So I thought what we talk about today, it's not so much Millet, uh, Millet is an excuse really, but what we should really talk about uh, with regard to Millet uh, is how do you take a statist economy, how do you take an economy in which the government is in, in woven into every aspect of it, how do you take an economy in which uh, the government controls, regulates, taxes, redistributes, uh, subsidizes, and everything else, how do you take it and how do you, how do you liberalize it? How do you liberate such an economy? What are the steps uh, one would take? What are the steps one should take? Now, obviously, Millet has already put a program together, at least step one, he has suggested in front of, con in front of Congress. We talked about that a, um, a few, um, a few uh, weeks ago when he proposed it, the 300 items. Uh, and, and a lot of it is right in line with what I'm going to be saying today in terms of the way to approach it. But I think it is important to think this through and to think about the principles that should guide you, uh, I'd say, through many of the first phases, the first uh, uh, stages of uh, liberating an economy. Uh, and uh, so that's what we're going to talk about. What are the steps? What are the stages? How do you get from where you are today to a free market? What are the things that the government should do in order to get us there, in order to maximize the speed by which we get to freedom, minimize, if you will, the, um, the, the pain? And, and it's not so much on mind the pain. Sometimes pain is needed. But uh, the pain uh, likely results in increased, increased um, uh, opposition to your plan. So part of, part of doing it right is to do it in a way that doesn't uh, create political barriers to actually achieving the plan. So uh, uh, I think that's really, really important in, uh, in the process. Uh, and, we can, and what we should think about, and, and of course I'm open to questions from you guys about this as well, is also how do you do this, in, how, how would you do this specifically in the United States, given our structure, our economy? I mean, Argentina has problems that are, uh, that are generalizable, that, that cut across any country, all countries running huge deficits and, and, and problems with inflation of central banks, although it's much worse, and, and problems of, of government spending and regulations and controls that cut across. But then, of course, it also has uniquely Argentinian problems, problems that don't exist in the United States. On the other hand, and the same is true of the United States, we have problems that much of the rest of the world doesn't happen, have, or at least some countries in the, West, the rest of the world don't have. I think, um, uh, 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 anyway, we'll, we'll get to that. So uh, that's what we want to talk about today. Uh, I'll remind you, you can, of course, shape the conversation by using the Super Chat and asking questions and getting us uh, to talk about what you, to get me to talk about what you want me to talk about. Uh, you, can, um, you can also uh, uh, do, a, do a sticker just to support the show. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about, uh, so let's talk about um, what you do in order to liberate an economy. And the first thing to really ask is, what is an economy? What do we mean by an economy? What is important in an economy? Uh, what, is, what is an economy? And I'd say the, 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 the core of an economy, the, the most important part of an economy, or, or really all of the economy, the economy is production and trade. That's what an economy is. It's the production and trade of goods and services. And, uh, you know, consumption is one side of the trade. But the funny thing about the, how the world operates and how Keynesian economics has kind of shaped the way policymakers really frame the debate around economics, it's almost like the only thing that matters is consumption. The only thing that matters is the consumer. Consumer sentiment, consumer willingness to spend, consumer consumer, uh, you know, the, the prices that they face. It's all about the consumer. It's all about one side of the trade. And I think that's what you have to really have to break if you're going to reform 
a mixed economy, a statist economy, a Keynesian driven economy, which is almost every economy in the West today. So if an economy is production trade, that's what you need to focus on. You need to focus all your efforts on liberating production and liberating trade. Not one side of the trade, but the trade, the entire activity. So let's break that down. I think the most important thing to do when you're trying to free up an economy is to liberate the producers, free up the productive created juices, if you will. Well, juices is wrong, right? Free up the productive and creative minds that people have, the productive and creative energy and will that people have that entrepreneurs and businessmen have. The most important thing you can do is to liberate production. And to liberate production means the most important thing you can do is to get rid of regulations, controls, any kind of controls that limit or steer production. That means slashing regulation, cutting them left and right every way you can. Now, the process of cutting regulation has to be thought through so that you don't create crises in the meantime, particularly in the financial sector. But in most other sectors, just get rid of them. Get rid of all the controls that dictate what people can invest in and what they can produce and what they can create. So, you know, just, just look at, look at um, the airline industry uh, before deregulation. Airline industry used to be controlled by the government. The routes, the prices, capacities were all dictated by government. This is before deregulation in the late 1970s. And then that was done away with. And what happened is, is a boom in, in flying. Prices dropped dramatically, capacity increased substantially, competition exploded, capital investment exploded, investment in customer facing, consumers, at the end of the day, they need consumers, right? Exploded. And you got a dramatic increase in efficiency, productivity, and at the end of the day, in the number of miles that people fly. I mean, it's just the numbers astounding in terms of the growth. And this happens in every industry that is deregulated, where the government steps away. And here I mean any regulations that set price on a service or good, any, uh, any regulation that restricts investment or, sh or, or channels investment in a particular direction. I mean, look what's going on in, um, in energy. I mean, imagine if the market for energy was totally deregulated. That is, you can go negotiate to drill, to, 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 to take out oil, to frack. If you want to build solar panels and you can figure out how to do it well, find the land, build, build the solar panels, all of that. Stop all subsidies. Stop all tax credits even though that would mean some people, some companies would, the taxes would increase. That's fine in the short run. We'll talk about taxes later on. That's fine in the short run if taxes go up a little bit. But the benefits from getting the central planners out of the business of guiding where capital goes through subsidies, tax credits, and everything else is such a huge benefit. It doesn't matter if taxes go up a little bit. So if, if I were president of the United States, the first bill I would propose to Congress, and you have to do this through Congress, as hard, difficult, crummy, 
awful as it is. You have to do it through Congress. But the first bill I proposed to Congress is a bill called Liberating American Business. And it would be a bill that basically, you know, took the regulatory regimes that we have today and basically instructed regulatory agencies to start cutting regulations at every level, in every industry, in every place, by, you know, in some industries, I would say 25% a year. So within four years, zero regulations. Some industries, you can deregulate immediately. Take it as zero right now. Energy, for example. It's urgent. It, it doesn't have external fallout. In banking, you can't do that fast. Banking, you need four or five years in order to deregulate the whole thing. And you would put this massive bill in front of Congress that assigned to the regulators the assignment of getting rid of themselves within four years by law.